right, K Rob. So uh, welcome to the hour. Welcome to the K Rob on the Barbarian Hour. We've had you before. I like having you. Probably trying to make you like a monthly guest or something. We, I don't. I could do weekly with you. We could talk for hours. But how is it going out in the Pacific Northwest? You know, it's going. Uh, it's going really well. Um, I'm on the mend. I had my shoulder operated on uh, four weeks ago today. Um, we completed the Idaho State Tournament this weekend. And then uh, we're getting ready to jump into springtime uh, weekend, the, the weekend camps. So actually starting uh, Friday. Okay, so we got camps out of the dungeon there, out in the, uh, the greater Coeur d'Alene, Spokane area. Uh, you guys are out there in the mountains and um, put on some pretty good camps, Coach. I love the camps. The camps I've been to, I've been coming to camps that you've been running since 20, 2009. How about that? I've been oh, working nine. with you on camps since 09. Think about that. Wow. That's No, that's, yeah, when you were announcing at the Oregon State camps, but. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Yes. The team camp. Yes, then, all that. Uh, Competition been, elite competitor. You've been up to flag. the Eastern Washington team camp. Uh, you've been to Coeur d'Alene a couple times for in the ones we've had in the gym. Or in the wrestling room with with Ian Miller and Mike Mangrum and Scott Sakaguchi and some other goons that I brought along with me. Elder. Alex Elder. Hey, Alex Elder. Yeah. Your son Drew. Was that a couple of them? Yeah. The he Hookmaster. Was Tony Hook. Yeah. Your in-laws, your brother-in-laws. Yeah. So you get you, you get a really good staff. I like your staff. I like coming out and covering the camps. I like it. I have fun. If you haven't well, noticed. It's fun for the staff because they're 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 guys that you know like being around each other. So, you know, wrestling camps are fun, and and you want to help kids, and that's the main reason you do them. You, you love it, but it makes it, um, you know, you're grinding sometimes, and you're putting in some long days, and you're sweating, and it's the summer. And when you're around people that in between sessions or even walking around and passing. Um, they're making fun of you or whatever and making you crack a smile and, and you can return it. You know, it's, it, it, it's fun to spend time with people like that. So this weekend, you guys have a big one out of the dungeon and the dungeon is just getting all roughed in and finished up, had an add on uh, that's going to be really good for the summer camps, but what's going on at the dungeon this weekend? Is there any availability and, and you know, what do people got to do to, to get into Yeah, the I got about four spots open, but that would put us pretty much at, at max capacity, even with our, you know, expansion. But uh, just, just added uh, 13 or 1400 square feet on um, to the structure and, you know, have everything. It's, it's a long way from when we bought this property and with a, with a pole barn in October, mid October, um, five months, we've come a long way, you know, put, put electricity and insulation and heaters and air conditioning and speakers and more mats, new mats, added space, bathrooms, showers, lighting. You know, I mean, just, it's, it's, we've been just chipping away at it and, uh, it's out in the country. It's out in the woods, you know, um, on a, on a nice piece of land. So it's, it's nice to get away, get out there and you're not too far away from society either. So people can fly in. It's easy access if they want to get there from the Midwest. You know, it's not hard because I think we're trying to come out this summer with yeah. the crew, with yep. the crew. Hopefully we get some Burnett's out there. And, and yeah, we've them. been talking about that. Yeah. So hopefully we can get that going and uh, fly to Spokane and we pick you up and, you know, bring you. 45, minute, 45 minutes from Spokane about? Max. Yeah. Max. Not bad. No, no. Not, not bad at all. Um, it's in the mountains, too. It's cool. It's rural. I, I'm in Big it, so. trees. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Five, minutes, five minutes from a river. I mean, a lot of good things. Yeah, I'm excited to to get out there this summer. I was actually with you this summer when you were looking at properties all around North Idaho area in that that general vicinity, Coeur d'Alene, North Idaho. 
area out there in the mountains, up in and around. It was cool. Uh, well, that's a beautiful area if people don't know. Um, I love getting out there, being in that Spokane area. Where did we go? What's the river that I want to try and raft? Or I want to, I want to, I'm going to jump off that bridge this summer that's uh, west of Spokane. What is that? Spokane River. What is yeah. that? Bowling Pitcher? The Bowling Pitcher. Yeah. We, we went down there. I took you I down think, there. Can you, can you jump in and swim around there? It looks like you can. I think there's some spots. I don't know if I'd try in the Bowling Pitcher. Well, the Bowling Pitcher, I'll ride it, though. I'll, I'll – Yeah. Yeah. We'll get we'll get a raft or something and bull and picture it. Yeah, you you've you've got you've got um you've got a bigger intestinal fortitude than I do. I I, I like my feet on the oh, ground. No. You ride a raft, a raft's not bad. Whitewater rafting is way different than kayaking. You understand that, right? Yeah, no, I've done it a few times. I've rafted the chutes a couple times. I, I was time. telling you that story, that speeding ticket story about me coming out of mopping. Yeah, that, that's chutes. where you pull out and mop in that yeah yeah so we we dropped in and mop in and my best friend's insane john watkins who is now moving out of portland and out into sandy and I um, I, i'm sure that you can use deductive reasoning as to why he is leaving portland but that, would be true. that being said uh he is moving and um he's the one that's the maniac rafter like yeah, yeah. Linlin told me he was nuts. Linlin's well, like, oh yeah, he's nuts. Yeah, when 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 Linlin tells you that, you know this guy's serious. Yeah, he's out of his mind. I'm not allowed to raft with him anymore. But anyhow, he's he's moving out to Sandy. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, Sandy's real nice. So he's not too far from Hood, but he's got a bunch of trees he needs cut down. And I told him, I go, John, the. Remember when we went back to like your old house this past summer? Do you remember that? And all those yeah, old ladies, yeah. those old ladies like pulled up. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And the trees were massive. He said he's got about twenty trees like that. He needs cut down. I said, John. Yeah. I wow. said, John, that's out of my pay grade, bro. No, but your but, brother might be able to do it. Sure, whatever. But the point is, he wants to do all this DIY. Do yourself. <laughs> So John, tree work's not the thing to DIY. He's like, well, I see you dropping trees all the time. And I said, dude, I'm dropping 70, 80 footers. These are 150 footers. So the trees you're dropping that are 10 foot from your house, I, I have no business dropping that tree, man. I go call a, you know, call Whitlakes. I don't know. Doesn't Whitlake's dad, Whitlake's dad's a lumberjack, right? Travis Whitlake Sr. could do that. Yeah. Oh, seriously. Like Travis Whitlake Sr. could come up and do that work for him. A hundred percent. Yes. But but the point is, it's not a Zeb Miller thing. No, well, I, I do you know, ash you know. trees out here. I do, I do some um, black cherry trees out in the back. But that's just Kevin. These trees are half the size of your trees. Yeah, I have no good. business. I have no business doing that. And I was, I, I shot him straight. I was like, hey, well, I went to Nemeth's dad's, Dolph Ziggler's dad's, over there by the airport in Cleveland, and um, I cut like five or six trees down for him and I barber chaired one of them because I didn't give it to a back cut and you got to back back cut it or wedge it but it was leaning so hard I thought it could break and that right there tells me like hey dude that was it was leaning there was no issue and then I had to pull it down on my truck I'm not a lumberjack Travis Whitlake senior that's your guy oh for sure at the kid oh, right I've seen the kid the kid post things on social media the the boy Travis Whitlake at Oklahoma State. Yeah, junior, junior. Yeah, yeah. He, I think he does it too. He does. Yeah, he has some know-how. So he'd be better off having Travis Whitlake Jr. Yeah, not Zeb Miller. Not Zeb Miller. I don't need to fly out there and, do, and then just you know, get him to buzz up from Coos Bay. Actually, I might try and hook that up. But we got to get back into and we got to talk. We got to talk uh, Idaho State Tournament. Okay. Talk to me. How, how did the, the Vikings do? Uh, you know, the Vikings had a, had a good tournament, um, overall it was, uh, you know, there was a couple that obviously we, we'd like to win a couple, couple seated guys that didn't quite get back where they needed to be and wanted to be this year. But, you know, we had, we had some good performances. We had, uh, two guys that were primarily second string for much of the year, um, qualify and then get on the podium i think both place uh one fit one was fifth one was sixth at state so we had a freshman state placer um at 160 
and you know we had three champions so i think we had nine placers i'm, I'm not positive i think it was nine placers three champions which was you know really good i think that was the most in the 5a we ended up fourth uh three points out of third so you know we, we didn't probably have the depth um idaho you've probably never well i know you haven't um been to it but so for instance the team that won meridian which is was a good team out of Boise, but you know they qualified 29 guys for the state tournament. So it's a different deal than going and trying to win the Ohio State tournament, where if you got three or four guys wrestling on Saturday night, you might you might win the thing. Here you're you could be 90 points back. That's so wild. Yeah, when you yeah, were explaining it to me, it's a today, different format. I mean, just yes. you know, and I mean, Montana have, Montana does 17. the same thing, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. We, to be fair, we had 17 qualify, you know, so <sighs> that doesn't happen everywhere, every day. Um, and we play. Can you nine. qualify 28, Kevin? In Idaho, there's 15 weight classes. There's 98. So Meridian qualified 29 out of a possible so 30. You can, you, can you can qualify 30. 30 guys. <laughs> you know, oh, that's so, awesome. So like to, so like to be um, like, so for like for me in high school, say when I was in high school, our team finished ninth at the state tournament, my senior year with three qualifiers, you know, but they were we all probably their finalists, third, third. Yeah. We had a champ, a second. Right. Right. Yeah. So, you know, and like, you know, uh, Travis Pasco, who's a really Good friend of mine, you know, worked with him for six years, I think, at Oregon State. And don't make him better, Travis Pascoe. Let's just no, a good, great guy. I talked to him yesterday. But Love him. Like, so, so the year that Gonzaga Prep won, you know, the Washington State Big School, they had, I believe, six qualifiers. And that is where Travis, Travis went to, to Gonzaga Prep. Gonzaga Prep, yeah. yeah. So they had six. They had him. They had, I think, one other guy was, was first or second. And then, but everybody placed. But that was enough to win the tournament. Well, you know, Idaho, we, we had nine placers, three champions. But, yeah, we were – we were. I think, I think Meridian had that thing wrapped up by about mid-tournament. So what's crazy here is – And that was the first comparing. time they won. That was well, Meridian had never was, won. It. Meridian no, 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 hear me out. That was the first time they won since I believe – you're a wrestling historian, you like this – since I believe 1987, when a guy named Bruce Burnett was the head coach. No way. Oh, yeah. No way. Oh, yeah. And he was there this weekend. I, I, I was going to say, I, he's back out in Idaho because Rudis, Rudis just did a, a piece on uh, – they did a piece on the 1987 U.S. Open and the World Team Trials, and Burnett was in it, and they, the location they were shooting was in Idaho with him, with his interviews. Yeah, Sandpoint, Idaho. Yeah, about 45 minutes. From, it's not too far from you. Yeah, about 45 minutes. It is a beautiful place. So, straight straight shot, maybe one stoplight. There's an amusement park in between. <laughs> there in your your house. Yeah, you're 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 talking about uh Oh, I went there this summer. Um It was open yeah, this I, summer? Was it open? Well, was it open? I'm, Time flies by, man. It might have been last summer. This whole year. Yeah, it might have been the summer of 2019. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So let's just talk about individual performances. You got two really good guys. You got two blue chippers on the team. Obviously, your son, Drew Roberts, multiple time junior national and cadet freestyle All American uh, for Coeur d'Alene High. He's placed in the Ironman. He's won multiple state titles. He won a state title in Oregon state title and then two state titles in um, Idaho and a one-time state place in Washington. So, you know, he's going to Minnesota. Then you got the Ironman champion, everything champion, prep national champion, uh, Rylan Rogers on the team. So you got two blue chippers there, right? 52 to 195. And you got a guy in between who won a state title as well. What a third state title, right? Yeah. Gunnar Julio won his third state title at 170 this year so he's 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 went uh 52 152 160 170 so those yeah. are tough weights to win as he's, he's three he's three for three yeah he he wrestled a uh really just excellent tournament so beat a, beat a kid that 
beat a beat a very good wrestler that had beat him twice during the year. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, so you know, really good kid, another a returning state champion in in his own right. Um, up from one thirty eight last year. Actually, my son wrestled him last year. Wow! Uh, um, at one thirty eight, and uh, yeah, and so he he got big. He went to seventy. Wow! And, uh, That's a jump. Very, That's like a David did, Taylor jump. Did did very well. Was not a small one, seventy pounder. Dante Roggio from Kuna, uh, very good wrestler. I think he uh, he's going. He might be going to University of Mary or or something like that next year. He's South, going somewhere in North Dakota. To, yeah, I believe so. I think he's going to a Division two school. I, I want to say it's Mary. Yeah, it's Mary D two or NAI. I forget. I think they're D two now, but I mean, you know. I, well, a I lot of them start in, D, in NAIA and then they convert to D2. That's, that's what uh, Notre Dame College here did. Right. Yeah, that's I what mean, a lot of Mary, them do. Mary has a long tradition. I mean, Milo Trusty that coached at, coached at Mary in, in the 80s and 90s. And, I mean, he was, he was the Matt Pack coach before that in the 80s and coached a couple guys in the Bismarck area named, like, Troy Steiner, Terry Steiner, Chad Renner, he Ryan some Brinkley. things. Yeah, yeah. he's – yeah. He knows yeah. talent. Yeah. Okay, so uh, three champs, but Meridian had how many? Cha- how many? They had one champ, but how many places out of their champ? I, I could be misspeaking. They might have had two. I believe they had one champ. Okay. Um, and but they had, uh, I want to say like sixteen placers. That is amazing. Yeah, no, they, I mean, they did an awesome job. Yeah, so Meridian's Boise, so that's a big school division. You guys are big school division. How many big schools are there in the North Idaho Panhandle? In the Panhandle, there's four. You know, we don't so have So wait, much wait, much. wait, 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 wait. What's your qualification? Uh, you go to districts, and they're, um, I think you have to get – I think you have to get top three. How many uh, entrants per weight? How many t- does each school get? Does each school get two or three entrants? How many? Yeah, two, two. Yeah, you can take so two. It's, eight, it's an eight-man bracket. Eight-man bracket. I think. If okay. You get first through third, you go to state. Gotcha. So Boise, two of the three could be your two of the three guys could be from the same team. Oh, absolutely, and sometimes are. Uh, Boise has fourteen schools, so I believe they take top eight out of districts to state. Oh wow! So you know it's and and they they that's that's where most of your schools are. There's some spread out throughout. So does Pocatello the have big schools too? They have, yeah, yeah, they have Highland. Yeah, what Highland okay? Actually, what is the bracket? What's the is it a sixteen man bracket? Yeah, sixteen. Sixteen. So you have two divisions though. Yeah. Two sixteen yeah. man brackets, right? Sixteen man brackets. Like this year, they ran those. It was kind of interesting in uh, one day. You did that so they one could, day. So they could split up the divisions as to have less people in the arena. Yeah. So Were fans know, allowed. Each uh, each competitor got to bring uh, two fans, family, supporters, whatever. Two two access to two tickets per gotcha. wrestler. Gotcha. So yeah, you know we were fortunate that. Uh, you know, my wife and daughter got to go, and we didn't have to use one of our tickets um, on me since I got I got to coach. Okay. Yeah. So left two of the kids at home with my seventeen year old nephew. Dogman? No, not Dogman. No, Dogman was wrestling. No. Dog, how Dogman do? Uh, Dogman didn't place this year. Um, DMP, but, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Dogman's been in the room, the gym, the last couple days. Dogman has had uh, basically he went almost two years without getting to wrestle. He had a knee uh, surgery, and then a degenerative elbow where the bone was dead and this what and that. They had to drill on? holes in there, and they yeah. And so he uh, he almost got to do very little physical activity for almost two years, and then came back in January and made the uh, state tournament. Yeah. But he just, you know, he's he's missed a lot of mat time. Yeah, that's so, tough, man. That's real tough. He's working at it. He's he's working yeah, at it. I mean, it's tough. This is tough. Yeah. I don't think we give 
Um, I think sometimes we're, we can be a little dismissive, you know, even guys like you and I, this is really hard. Especially with a, with a guy who's battling injuries, Kevin. Yeah, it's tough. It's so tough. It's tough. You know, it's tough. Uh, lots of critics out there. Uh, less people uh, being the, the, the man in the arena, you know. That but, Teddy uh, Roosevelt uh, quote is yeah. probably one of the best. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. The great. Now, you got to get out there and put it on the line, you know, and it's a lot yeah. easier from the stands. Any, any, anybody knows that, that really, you know, is honest about it. It's, it's tough. As you sit there and tell me that in a sling from yet another shoulder surgery, what did they do this time? Um, so I had a really messed up labrum and it was a full, full, it was worse than this one. This one I did three years ago. So this one was like, a, he said, it was a 360 degree, uh, labrum tear. I don't really know what that means. I had several, uh, bone on bone places where there was bone on bone. And then my bicep tendon, uh, was detached also that had to, that had to be reattached so i got like five anchors in there right now um so for a couple of weeks man i i didn't feel that good and i kind of felt bad because i didn't get to do a lot in the room the last couple of weeks of the season um you know i was in a sling i i just had to coach with my voice i i tried to demonstrate things a couple times and in a sling and you're doing something, even you got a leg right in or something, you're showing something, but then invariably, like you got to put your arm down to, to post or, or something like that. And you're like, ah, that's not a good idea. Yeah. And then one of the other adults in the room says, Hey, you know, need to go lean against the wall a little bit, just throw out verbal pointers. But uh, you know, normally I like to be in there a little bit more hands on and stuff. And just the way the surgery worked out, I, you know, I think I got it scheduled sometime in November, but they couldn't get me in until February. Everything was so backed up from, I believe, COVID and stuff Yeah. that, uh, you know, I had to get in line and February 3rd, I went in and, and I uh, got her done. You got to take it when they give it to you at that point, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Because no. if you back burner at that, at that point, you're not doing any of those summer camps, you know? Yeah. Then I'm, you've got then a I'm huge in, slate for the summer, Kevin. Yeah. Then I'm into, huge you know, slate. Then I'm, then I'm into my my you know what i do for a living so i had to get it done yeah, yeah. absolutely you, no you have to and that's just the, the name of the game uh drew has to get his knee fixed tomorrow tore, yeah he tore his acl what match did he tear his acl in kevin he tore his acl in the at the raleigh lane invite in all oh, about january 6th or 8th or whatever that was uh it's the montana third... kid no it's a guy from rigby rigby idaho oh really is uh, it it was an idaho pretty, kid pretty good pretty good kid actually um i believe he took third in the weight this week oh, but did he uh try? Yeah, he just, you know, he just, it was a, it was a, it wasn't a horrific looking thing. He just ran a go behind and then, you know, the guy tried to fight out of it and he, he ran to the leg, he ran to the single leg and started driving up and his knee just buckled a little bit, finished the hold, finished the hold, uh, match got over, you know, everything comfortable win. And he said, yeah, my knee, my knee kind of, my knee popped out there. It, it popped and I, and, uh, you know, so I thought, ah, yeah. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you get little tweaks here or there. But uh, <laughs> then come to find out he tore his ACL. So Any meniscus? Any meniscus? Uh, not that they've detected so far. You know, they're going in there tomorrow. It looks like it's just an ACL. MCL's good. LCL's good. As far as we know. Uh, PCL. PCL. Yeah, yeah, they say it's, they say it's good. But the ACL is definite tore, so – so he you know, came back, he came back, you braced him, and he yeah. won the Idaho State title. Yeah, he came back. He, he came back and wrestled. Uh, we wrestled Post Falls, you know, big rival out here, great program. Like, you know, what last, won the last couple state tournaments, kind of right down seven miles down the road from us, um, and wrestled in a duel. Wrestled in the duel, the last duel of his high school career. Um, I think we won the meet like 37 to 34 or 33 um, came down to the last match kind of thing. 
So yeah, he wrestled. He wrestled in that duel. We put him up to to sixty. We drew. We drew one sixty. We drew one sixty starting weight. Lead off. We put him up. Yeah, we put him at one sixty against their returning state champion. You know, we were hoping to get the odd or even or whatever and see how it played out. Where to put guys? And it was like, okay, it's going from the beginning. You're at you're at sixty. How did he do? He won. Gets the defending state champ up a weight. Yeah. Wow. How'd that guy do this year? He was second this year. Second this year. Yeah. So I think Drew's match, I think it was 17 to two or 18 to three or something. He got on top. He got some turns, you know. And oh, he got so, going. He got moving. Yeah. The match, the match was good. He had a good wow. match. Wow. That is wow. So then, then we just had, you know, we had to get through districts. Had to go and wrestle a couple matches at districts and then go to state. So I think after he had his torn ACL, he wrestled uh, seven matches. Including all the state series? Yeah, four at the state, you know. That two duel? The district, two, two or three in the district, I guess, and, and one in the, in the duel. Yeah, seven or eight matches. Yeah. Gotcha. Wow, so, man, that's tough to do. Like I say, you know, Dogman's been fighting – Dogman's real name's Dylan, isn't it? Yeah, Dylan Dogman. Yeah. yeah. So, Dylan no, has fought, there, you know. He's fought sure. so many injuries, right? And yeah. obviously, I know you know what it's like to fight injuries. A little bit, yeah. You know, I was fortunate. I had, uh, you know, I had just only maybe, you know, I had a couple injuries, like you know, my senior year in the in the national tournament, or well, before the national tournament at the at the at the Pac 12s and stuff, but bad timing but you know uh really um got to go most of my career you know I, I had I had aches and pains and beat up but you know I uh just a couple surgeries I mean I I think I only had two surgeries before the age of 30 um now they've been catching up the last couple of years you know I'm making up for lost time yeah, I was gonna say you've made up for that I think I'm up to nine now um but yeah I only had two before I turned 30 you know um so it's just it's how it goes. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough sport, man. There's just so much wear and tear on the body. And, you know, speaking of which, this summer, you're running a bunch of weeks of camp uh, at the dungeon. Um, yeah. And you're you going to come great, out a little bit? You're gonna I'm going to come out. Scotty Burnett's trying to come out with me. Hopefully, yeah. we can get the gray guy out there, Gray Burnett, one of the top youth guys in the country. So that, that should be really good. But, you know, that, that, um, Greater Spokane, North Idaho area. That's I like to be there. I'm not going to lie to you. I really like it. I had a blast this summer, right? Well, we've uh, we've got a couple spots that you and I want to see, and um, you know we are fortunate to live in an awesome part of the country. Um, so I could not complain about that at all, and you know, love it. And we, you know, there are things like we have to travel further, maybe to go find some really good guys to, to compete against sometimes. And, you know, there's things we're not uh, near huge metro areas or where we can go, you know, four hours and be in all these different states to hit competition and stuff. But we have to travel further for it. But the trade-offs are, um, we have, you know, really pretty nice weather. Um, it's not too bad on either end of the spectrum, winter or summer. And we have a lot of really, you know, uh, beautiful area and mountains and trees and rivers and lakes and not too many people, you know, not too much population and waterfalls. 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 We had a discussion today. Forests. Water, waterfalls. Yeah. We're Palooza. going to Palouse falls yeah we got it it's a two two hours i looked it up it's about two hours i heard it's stunning and you can roll right up on it well i've lived here a long time you know here meaning we're you know right within a 40 mile radius and grew up you know right right over there and uh, i've never been there so a lot of years I've, I've never been there when you were in oregon and you'd never been to crater lake and you're within three hours of it and i wouldn't shut up about it and then finally i remember you start sending me pictures one day. You and Drew went to Crater Lake. Yeah, I think when he was uh, eleven or ten, 
Did I uh, did I ever tell you the story about I think I took, it, I took him on a trip to do a camp. I took him on a trip to do a camp in Northern Brian California. Roseburg. Probably Rose did you go to Roseburg? No, we went to Susanville, California. We we went to Susanville, California, and we drove down and went through the, you know, uh, Crater Lake and took a bunch of pictures. And then we went through the, you know, Lassen National Forest and, you know, kind of made a trip out of it, a father-son trip and stuff. Went down and did a day of camp and went home the next day. Did I ever tell you about when Ian and I showed up and it was the mosquito hatch? Well, I don't remember nothing about that, but I remember some <laughs> jumping off the big rocks. Yeah, okay. So we it was the mosquito hatch and like billions of mosquitoes hatch in the middle of the summer at, at Crater Lake. And I remember there was snow everywhere because you know it's yep. winter. Oh, yeah. you know, I I I remember going getting caught in a snowstorm there in mid June with John Watkins, my best friend that lives out in Portland. And um it was wild, dude. They, oh, yeah. I remember I had a, I had, I was hitting myself and, and trying to get them off me. And I had bloody handprints all over from these things. Cause you go down the Cleetwood trail, which is a switchback trail down into Crater Lake. And these mosquitoes, you're moving just fast enough down the hill on the Cleetwood. But on the way back, you're move uh, way back up. You're slower because gravity, right? Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, I don't I, like those guys. I have a video of him. And he's laughing at me. He's trying to make a snow angel or something, and then he's like, "Oh my God, they're eating me alive!" Yeah. And he runs and he falls down. It was awesome. It was awesome. But um, yeah, man. He he. Uh, I think he had fell in love with us. That's why he lived out there for four years. And and you well, got I got I got caught. I got caught in a I got caught in a sea of them in uh, over on a coastal trail. There's like a mile or mile and a half trail where you park and then you go through and you you kind of go through some sandy areas, but it's got some trees in there and it's kind of a mixture of like forest and sand dune. And to go out to the beach, man, I got I got bit about 478 times. Uh, Wild oh, God, stuff, dude. Wild terrible. Stuff. <laughs> You know that they the water they're down there they like yeah. that water you they're know moisturizing they're hatching oh. and what's crazy is you don't nor you guys don't normally get the bugs out there that we get here no 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 generally that's not. what's wild about it I'm like what yeah. is happening right now and yeah generally and, it's not too bad no it's normally not bad at all because that was another thing John Watkins pointed out he's like oh the bugs are nothing like the bugs are there yeah and then and then I got caught in that hatch oh my god dude I was like what is, what is happening. What is happening? Um, where are the dungeons located? We don't know yet if we're going to get bugs this summer or not, do we? We don't know yet because we haven't been there in the summer. That's, what, that's, that's the whole point of the comment. There, there's, we don't know. There, there were none out there today. It's winter, Kevin. Yeah, well, it was 60. It was 60 today out there? It was 60. My wife said it was 52 in her van, and I was hiking, and you and I were talking. Yeah, and, it was um, 60, but, you know. Um, but yeah, summer will be a little bit different, so we got to be prepared for that. But they're they're not they're not like midwestern bugs. Kevin, what can we expect this summer out at the dungeon? Kevin Roberts, man on fire. What can we expect this summer? What's what's a week of camp look like? How do you you know like as far as tailor a camp need to a certain athlete or you know is there weeks where you're trying to make it competition, where you're trying to make it technique, where you're trying to make it intense training. What are you going to try and do to that? How do you tailor, uh, you know, Robert's wrestling and what you're doing, you know, at the dungeon? How do you tailor it to the to the individual athlete, I guess? Yeah, so the camps that we're going to have for younger guys are obviously a little bit different than, like, our camps for, you know, the older guys um, and, the, the you know, the hammers, if you will. Um, and so, you know, kind of working on the programs right now as far as that. Like, but, you know, I've been doing this a long time. I can read what's there a little bit but so we have some camps that are more for the little little guys and then you know maybe up to like 12 and under and then we have some camps that are definitely um you know kind of like all comer high school guys middle school and high school and then we have some that are going to be set up you know primarily for 
pretty, a pretty high level guy, you know, that we're going to get 30 kids together from all across the country that, you know, are that top, top level kid that's looking to get to a higher level that want to be college wrestlers and, and that kind of thing. So I'm still getting dialed in as far as that goes, um, which ones are going to be which weeks, um, you know, and I, I've, I've got a lot of notes and stuff, but I haven't put them up online and, and everything because for a while we were just like, man, are we ever going to get to use this place? Um, or is our country going to ever be open for business and stuff like that? Yeah. But yeah, um, it's happening. And yeah, so I'm going to be out there. I'm going to spend about probably 40 days of my summer, um, you know, out there putting, putting camps on for different kids, different age groups, different skill levels. Um, and most of them will be about five days at a time. And so, is, is 40 the sweet spot? Is 40 like the, the kind of like what you like to stick at about that number per week? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, you know, we'll see. Um, I've, I'll have a full room this weekend, so I'll kind of see what 40 looks like. I think 40 looks really good, um, you know, a couple reasons, um, and we'll see. Maybe maybe it's 45, but, you know, I, um, you know, I want the kids to get a lot out of it, so I'm not as interested in packing as many bodies in there as I can as far as, you know, and I, I want people to have enough room to wrestle. I want, uh, you know, to be able to make – you know, connections and really be able to give a, a optimal amount of attention, a lot of attention to more people rather than a little bit of attention to, to, you know, more people, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, I like, I like that. I like that. I, I like a high ratio of camper to, you know, staff, whether it's the guy running the camp, whether it's the guys, the, you know, college guys that are helping out, like the counselors, whether it's the headline clinician, guy that I'm bringing in, special guest like Scotty Burnett, like whatever it is, yeah. the adult in there, I'm, you know. I, I mean, I'm guessing we see Drew Roberts there. I'm guessing you see Rylan Rogers there. I know that you can't advertise those two, but I know that they're buddies. They hang out. They're both state champs on the same team. One's your son. One hangs out of your house a lot. So those are the types of guys we'll see. I don't know how many Miller boys we're going to get to pop in there. I don't know yet. Yeah, I know in the future. Got, I know in the got, future you'll have Miller boys, but yeah, we've got a lot of kids coming already. Um, you know, well, they're they're saying they're coming. Um, I have an open registration up, but very soon. But from Oregon, um, some Southern Idaho people, uh, a lot of Washington kids um, have some that express. Uh, interest some of the Canadian kids coming down if they can oh wow, uh, that'd be great Montana kids uh we've got some California kids that are coming so you know um we just want to create a great environment really you know have have a couple experienced people in charge kind of running things and teaching but really get the guys you know wrestling with each other and you know pushing each other and that's that's how they're gonna you know, that's how they're going to get to a higher level with, you know, paying attention to the instruction and then, you know, getting after it and going hard with, you know, good partners that'll, that'll push them. Year one standalone facility. Perler's got a standalone facility. Jeff Jordan's got multiple standalone facilities. Um, you know, just those two guys off the top of my head, you know, those are the standards in, in camp wrestling. One guy in, you know, the Plains, one guy in the Midwest. And, you know, those are two guys that run private camps. Obviously, J-Rob would do it at colleges. He's a little different. But, you know, you look at those two guys, Perler, what Perler does, and you look at what, um, obviously, what Jordan does. You know, I work with the Burnettes. They don't do it for a living like um, like Perler and, and Jeff Jordan do. But where do you see yourself in that that spectrum? You know, you got strip men are then, obviously. Oh, yeah. you know, young guns and and but a lot of these guys got their own standalone facility obviously with the with, with, with what's going on covid you're, you're not going to be back in cheney washington anytime soon probably not going to be at north idaho college anytime soon going on to a college campus is just i don't see that as anything feasible in the last 20, next 24 months it's just not a thing that's going to happen i i don't i i i mean i hate to say it i mean i just i, I don't 
you know, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't see a lot of those colleges opening their doors and saying, Hey, come on here. We're, you know, cause you can't, it's not just wrestling, you know, they have, they have all sorts of those institutional camps and bring thousands. Well, of no, that's how they fund. A lot of them fundraise volleyball. My wife was on a volleyball yeah, team. Yeah. She, you know, like one year, that was how she got paid. That was right. one year that my wife, four out of her five years at Kent state, she didn't get scholarship. Oh, I'm sorry. Four out of her five years, she got a full ride. In that one year when she didn't get the full ride, guess what they did? Paid her in camp. They paid her in camps, and that's how they took care of it. And you're not a moron, Kevin. There's, there's creative ways for these guys to get more than 9.9 scholarships. We're not idiots here. <laughs> Come on. Am I wrong? Yeah, well, we're, we're going down a different path now. I didn't see it going that way. But, but you yeah. get my point. You get my point. That is huge oh, yeah. for those college and those programs. Okay, hold on. We understand it doesn't matter for football and, and men's basketball. Those are on they're on a, they're on another level. We get that, right? Yeah. They don't need to do camps. They no. sometimes do, but they don't need to do camps. They don't rely on that revenue. Right? No. No. Oregon State, you guys relied on that revenue. These schools are relying on that revenue. You're not beholden to them anymore, though. You have your own standalone facility. I brought up the two standards, right? Perler, Jordan. Where do you yeah. see yourself in, in, I don't, I don't really want to say competition because the regions are just so different. Yeah. You're just, I, you're so far apart. You guys are over a thousand miles apart. Each one of you. Yeah. I see, I see, I see two guys that are super established and then a guy like me that's not yet, but someday will be. And, uh, you know, I, I actually, you know, I mean, I would like to kind of see what they do and stuff like that or, and learn, but yeah, I mean, they got really good things going. And now I'm finally doing what you told me I should be doing uh, 10 or 11 years ago, probably. Um, and I'm doing it now. And it's going to be great, you know, because uh, I love wrestling. I have a passion for helping people. I will work as, you know, I'll be, I'll be there every time kids want to be there. Um, but still, um I cannot work or not schedule camps the weeks like my kids are competing and doing their activities. And that's really the beauty of it for me is I can be my own boss and, um, you know, obviously work super hard and help hundreds and hundreds of kids. But, you know, when the high school state tournament's going on or when the NCAA tournament's going on or when, you know, there's a big match in a in an arena, and I want to go watch one of my kids. That's what I'm going to do. Speaking of which, and that 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 sounds really intriguing to me. I, I love it. I love it. I think that you and Eric Burnett will be uh, bleacher buddies because I think he's going to go down that route here soon as well with high school coaching. Yeah, I yeah, don't think we'll, it's a we'll, secret. I don't think, we'll, think it's we'll a be secret. We'll be sitting at the NCAs watching our kids together. Yeah, hopefully they don't wrestle, but you already know that's probably going to happen. Yeah. But, hey, that's just how it goes. Uh, yep, they could. One's a 49. I don't think a Drew's a 49, though. Yeah, we'll, we'll, have, to see. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Brandon Agam. Brandon Agam gets to decide that, not us. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. That's why you're sending him there. Yeah, no. he's uh, he's has new coaches now. Yeah. And yeah. Your dad, dad. but yep. your dad is a two-time D1 All-American. So sometimes, and there's a lot of those guys on that. No, my my dad, that, though. No, my dad never wrestled. You are dad. Oh, okay. You are a two-time All-American, but <laughs> but there's a lot of that on the Minnesota team, right? Um, uh, you know, well, there's a little. I mean, yeah. I mean, Drew's going in with Vance Fombauer, who you know Ben was a great wrestler for Boise State, and this yeah. you know run this Bear Cave. Uh, this club in, you know, out of Greeley or Windsor, Colorado, or, you know, putting out a lot of kids. And then, you know, of course, Marty Morgan's son is, is with the Gophers now. Um, now I'm trying to think there's probably others. I don't want to offend any. I'm, I'm sure there's others, but you get uh, my point. 
there's other guys who've had successful dads that are going to be on his team. You know, they're yeah, yeah, second no. and third generation they're guys, coaches. right? Coaches, yeah, oh yeah, no, and there has been for a while. You know, you had the that, Silverbergs. That, that's what I'm and, saying. There's, there's, yeah, no, there's, yeah, there's plenty of them at the you had Minnesota the Silverbergs, and and you know the the Thorns. You know, whose dad John, of course, was an Iowa State wrestler. But yeah, no, this has been done before. I mean, yes. for sure. So okay, speaking of NCAs, right? Um, did you get any conference tournament action this weekend? Or you, you, know, you know, I read results and I watched the Pac 12s on Sunday, and then I read results of other stuff. But Valencia, Shane, Sugar Shane. Yeah. Came yeah. down to that scramble, didn't it? That yeah, heart wheel point. over scramble, right? Yeah. Yeah. Six point move. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? And he won his well, fourth title. He won his fourth title. That's pretty and, good. And he can come back and win a fifth. How about that? I hadn't even thought about that. No, that's the big thing. Like this year, I keep asking all the guys I interview. Yeah, like, no, no. I know. I knew that. Back next year. I, yeah, I just, I guess I hadn't realized that. Um, but Hayden yeah, Heidley. No. Hayden Heidley just won his fourth. It just, ACC. It just seemed like it seemed like Anthony had already been there for six years or seven or something. I, I I've lost track, but you know, I, maybe he deferred a year. He didn't enroll, and then maybe he took I, an Olympic year. I, I yes, don't. because he took. Remember, he came out of high school and he was third on the ladder. Yeah, yeah. third on the ladder coming out of high school to Burroughs. Yeah, it was wild. He beat like Colt Sponsel or someone. I was like, "There's no way it's a high school kid." Well, he beat he beat Tyler Caldwell. He beat Isaiah Martinez that spring. A bunch of people. I, yeah, no, for sure. I, uh, yeah, I, I'd lo I've lost track, you know, especially with Zahid being done. I mean, I, I don't know. I, but I don't know. Zahid's younger, isn't he? No, they went in the same year. But who's older? I think Anthony's older, but they did graduate. That's the same my time. thing. I, that's and, my and point, I, though. I, I think I Anthony's might be, older. Yeah, and I don't want to be taken for the gospel here. I I might not. No, 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 no. I, I I no, but I think we're right. I think Anthony's actually older than the Heat. Yeah, I think he is, but but they did graduate the same year high school. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, they would have came yeah. in together, but there's. I think he might have deferred like an Olympic redshirt year or something like that. But you know, he can do. Like yeah. yeah, and then he has another year next year. It's so wild. Yeah. Um, any any SoCon, any ACC, any Easterns, any NWA, Well, I watched Mac. I watched the results of the SoCon, and I was reading the results and saying, "Holy smokes!" Can I how, can I can I try can I can I can I take the words out of your mouth? Yeah. Holy smokes! How did Appalachian State win the team title? Is that I, I thought I read the first five weeks. <laughs> I thought they were the champions. Yeah. Oh, I was on the I was texting Ian. I'm like, how are you winning? What's going yeah. on here? Yeah. I mean, there's only 10 weights. Yes. Not, I'm like, you want not half the whole weights. high school where there's 15. There's 10 weights and you got first and half of them. Yes. Um, okay, so here's the story. I'll give you the story. You ready? So first off, their two best guys are 65 and 74 for Motto and Flitz. Um, they did not win it. Um, but Flitz has like Austin Murphy, who's an Ohio kid. He's a Cincinnati elder because he's tougher than nails, right? He he lost to him, I wanna say. Uh, yeah, I think he did. But um, don't quote me on that. He didn't win 74. The other dude didn't win 65. Flitz and Fermato didn't win 65. Those are the two best guys, right? Okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, Milner at 49 is pretty good. Cody Russell is pretty good at 25. And then the other three guys that won the conference and got automatic bids, but they got no scoring out of 97 or 84. Okay. And so Campbell went in there and scored probably at 10 weights. Scored all the weights, right? A top four placer at every weight. And that league is growing because it's got Presbyterian in it. I think yeah. it's got Bellarmine in it. Bellarmine, okay. Yeah, and uh, Cheezo Pete's. And that's great to see. I mean, no, I'll tell no, you what. yeah, I love it. I love it. No, it's great. And then Davidson did not attend the championships. Okay. And then, oh, did you see Sacred Heart got two qualifiers? I saw Sacred Heart did. Um, you know what's really interesting, Kevin? I'm not going to lie to you. I read, I read that the one, I think, I believe it was first time in 14 years they had a qualifier. 
Yeah, since 07, when they had that had Iranian to, had guy to be was the over heavyweight, there. right? Heavyweight that was an Iranian, right? Right, right. Hey, Kevin, I just want to tell you something really interesting. You know, there's a lot of talk of data and conspiracy theories. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. But, Kevin, the EIWA had, I, I want to say, six teams – six elite academic institutions that are in the Eastern Intercollegiate uh, Wrestling League, Wrestling Associate, whatever it is. Okay. okay. They had about the same amount of qualifiers, Kevin, without having those six elite academic institutions. So, so by that, I'm, 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 you're, you're, you're talking about Princeton, you're talking about Columbia, you're talking about Cornell. Brown. Uh, Brown. Penn, Penn. Columbia. Columbia, yeah. yeah, good teams, right? Good, good teams, really good schools. Yeah, One's you know, I mean the best schools, schools in the world. But yeah. Um, yeah, Kevin, so they didn't have those teams wrestle in that conference, and that conference got about the same amount of qualifiers, if I'm not mistaken. Now I read, and I just have been reading headlines. I've been too busy doing all my other stuff, but I believe they got 49 percent or something like that of the conference is qualifying. Is that correct? Yeah, Kevin, something, that's, something like that, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, here, yeah. here, here I, I've had some college coaches express concern. I, I won't name names. You know, I, I, would, I wouldn't do that, k Rob. I wouldn't do that. Right. But um, right. they, they told me some very interesting information, k Rob, and um, it, it was alarming, I guess is the word I would use. Um, so the, the information was that um, – <clears throat> I believe Azevedo, who's at Drexel. Yeah. Um, the commi- I'll just read the committee to you. The committee is an individual from Cornell, an AD from Cornell. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's, he's been involved for a long time. Yeah, um, there, so Cornell's in that league, if you didn't know. Right, right. Coach Azevedo is in that league, is on the um, – Rest Division One committee as well. So, I just found it really interesting that those um, in and Drexel got six qualifiers. So, those people are on the committee, and that's how it went. I'm at I'm whatever, man. I just I find that crazy that six really good teams, Harvard. I forgot to mention them there. That's Harvard. Cool. But um, yeah, they didn't. They did not. Uh, those those teams did not uh, attend the championships because they didn't have a season, right? Right. But so they still I, got a bunch of qualifiers. So I'm a little bit uh, out of the loop, and and you could tell me, like I said, man, I I you know the last couple weeks went from the operating room, a couple days laying on the couch, back into practice, concentrating on the end of this high school season, and I. Uh, I don't know the whole process, how they picked who got to go this year. Well, I you mean, know the whole thing is it's four match minimum, right? Right, I knew, I knew that. So you know yeah. the whole real wood scenario, right? I know it. And I, and I, and so I told you. They're going to be able I, to get in matches, though. Did you know that? Well, I, uh, I, was, I was in this uh, Facebook uh, group. Um, can I walk for a second? But we're, we're still on. We're still recording. We're still on a show, but you do you. Yeah, no, I'm just going to go get my charger in case my phone decides to Ooh, die. we don't want that. That would the, the show wouldn't be on anymore. Hey, guys, where's my charger? Oh, man. Oh, man, hey. things are getting done. They're getting busy. They're getting jiggy at the uh, Roberts. Hey, it's Libby. Hi, Libby. Hey, Libs. Hey, Colton. Is Colton, that, that phone will rot your mind. Be careful. Is it just you and Zeb? Yeah, it's just me and Zeb. Just me and Zeb. That's what I do. Okay. So, uh, again, I know the four matches. And um, I saw this Facebook group that I, I don't know what it's called, the, the wrestling room. First off, can you just can we get one thing straight? I have nothing against the EIWA. Let's right, just right, get right, that right. out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. But no. if six teams aren't in there, it should – I don't know. They're, all those are elite academic institutions that aren't in there. 
And the ones that are still in there are elite act academic institutions. If you didn't know, the Naval Academy is a pretty good school. Uh, Army West Point is a pretty good school. Drexel yeah. is a pretty good school. I, I mean, Bucknell is a pretty good school. I can keep going if you need me to. I'm good. But they're, they're really good schools is the point. Like, I'm not a moron. I understand percentages. Yeah. I get that you're the largest conference. But when six teams aren't there, that should adjust it according, accordingly, one of those teams being Cornell. Yeah. That's all I'm saying, Kevin. Yeah, no. I, I, uh, so I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't super um, – I mean, obviously, like, like the gold standard and the silver or wh whatever that – that this is a really crazy year, right? Let's yeah. I mean, we, we get that. We get that. How, and then, how, and then, yeah. It, it, if, okay. So what's the other? Some thing? of these guys got five matches. Yes. Four matches. Seven but you got to have four. And but hold on, you don't have to have four going into the conference. You have to have four post conference. Uh -huh. Most okay. guys who are worth much at all are going to get three matches in the conference, right? Okay. Am I wrong? Uh, you're probably right. Yeah, I mean, I mean if you're a guy, you can really... go one and two at a conference. Yeah, you can. I'm Zeb Miller. I went, I went two and two at the MAC one year, right? Okay. Lost in the true second match. I told you that today. So that right there, I I met the requirement by wrestling four matches in the Mid American Conference tournament. Right. Which had six teams at the time. Right. You can. Do so it, in right? the in the Pac-12, you're you're not going to get a lot of matches, especially if you're winning. Exactly. You got you got six teams. I mean, um, you know, so the so most you get in three, you can get three matches. So, so am I right that you have to, if you don't have four, you're supposed to win to go? Is that correct? Correct. You have to quote unquote. Matt Hill kept correcting me. It's not really stealing. It's not really stealing. Well, if Real Woods comes in, and he didn't earn any of those qualifying bids, he didn't bring a bid to the conference, and then he wins the conference, he has stolen a bid. Right. And the only way Real Woods could qualify, hold on, now there's a big petition thing, and now they think they can get him another match. There's a bunch of stuff going on behind it, if you didn't know that. Um, I was reading that people were speculating whether they could. Yes, they, could. okay, sorry. They were speculating that they could get yeah. him another match to get to yeah. the, the threshold of four. But well. Don't say it if you don't. Don't say it if you don't want to hear people roast you for it, buddy. I mean, it's not like we got tens of thousands of viewers here. But, but Kevin, long story short, Real Woods is in a tough spot. Because Real Woods is really good. But, and, you know, obviously, what's the assumption on the Stanford staff? Oh, he's just going to go and win the tournament. And they're yeah, confident he'll go, in their he'll, guy. He'll go win. Yeah, yeah and, win. And, and, and I like that confidence. And they should have that confidence in our guy. Yeah, absolutely. Real freaking Woods is good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's that good, right? He's, but, you know, really it's a – COVID year, you don't know what the training situation. They're training outside, man. Well, the guys, the 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 real fact is that the guy's taking like 22 credits or something. He's trying to get a Stanford degree before so they, they shut transfer. the program. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And, I get what doing. and, you know, I mean, for what I knew was he just wasn't going to enter. Um, and That's then, what I had heard as well. Yeah, he just was going to, and then, and then, you know, Kudos to him. He he wanted to enter to you know. What a freaking be part of his, warrior! What a freaking be, warrior! Be, you know, be a part of his team and what and, a and just that. a freaking warrior, man. Very very Trying to get the degree, burning the candle at every end you can burn it with a flamethrower. And well, goes into that tournament, man. Well, I mean, not to segue too off, but we we both know that we both know that for no matter what. No matter what is, you know that I am, and I, and I think you are too. Is more than anything, advocates for the sport of wrestling, and people like him just punctuate why Stanford frickin' University should have wrestling. I mean, that is so goddamn moronic. It, what they're doing and, is so, just, sorry about the language. There, no, yeah, I mean, I don't care. That but that is eleven it, sports. They're doing this to eleven sports. How do they think they win that all sports thing every year? With you know, and maybe, with football and, and, and then maybe, basketball? And, and maybe the times are changing. Maybe the guy in charge says, you know, we don't care about that anymore. We don't care about kind of the Ivy model being having a very uh, a wide breadth of sports opportunities and, and winning the Sears, what used to be called the Sears Trophy. What is it You know, now, now 
Ah, yeah, I mean, I got this right. phone right here. They, yeah, these phones have made it. us dumber. What Pre is it called? Pre President's Cup. President's Cup, President's I believe. Cup. Okay. Used to be the Sears Trophy. Okay. You know, because they had fencing and they had gymnastics and they had, you know, water polo and swimming and all that. Maybe that guy's becoming more and more like dare I say, like the majority or at least. Um, Director's Cup. Director's Cup. Yeah, yeah, Director's Cup. So, you know, maybe maybe that guy down there in charge is becoming more in like um, a lot of his, you know, um, peers. Like, yeah, you know, we're going to focus on basically like two sports. We'll have a few more so we can meet some, you know, um, you know, so we can meet some requirements as far as, you know, men and women go and stuff like that. But really, we're going to put our eggs in like a couple baskets and just be done with everything else. I don't know. It, I mean, it, let's, it, let, let's ask this. Let's assume that all the info that we're getting is correct, that Stanford has already raised $12 million. I heard a, the number I heard would make you puke that they raised. I heard it was twelve million that they already raised, and 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 how, I mean, how moronic would you have to be, Zeb? If I came to you and you were the and you were the AD down there down the road from me at Clinton State or something, and I said, "Hey, I'm going to give you twelve million dollars to start to start a sport or to start a couple sports," and you were like, "Nah, we're good." I think we're talking about Stanford. You're an athletic director. Yeah. I, but I think Stanford's just such a different deal, Kevin. How, how did we get here? I love how we got here, but I, it, it just – We were we were talking about real, and I said he is the epitome of he, why that university should have wrestling, like guys like Tanner Gardner that are, yes. you know, now down AD at Rice University. Amucha Stagy. Amucha Stagy. Amucha Stagy that's – Freaking probably gonna, you know, send some guy to Jupiter or something like that. And, yeah, Mucha Stagy's um, smart. And uh, it's like, yeah, nah, we don't, we don't, we, we don't want these guys. Dude, one of Hada's kids went there. Tadaki's one of his sons, is a, a Stanford guy. I mean, I believe it's uh, Robert. Robert Hada is a. The other Hada's an idiot, though. He went to Penn. <laughs> hey, everybody that everybody that i know that went to stanford is pretty sharp no that's the point like the hotta yeah, brothers the hotta brothers are smart man the hotta i mean tadaki's a genius but like you, <laughs> that's what's wild about it man i just i can't believe it we're sitting here talking about it like i but uh, i like it i like talking about a little of everything and, i do uh, i i like potpourri potpourri is good you know and i you know and i'm just I, i'm I'm sick about them and Fresno State. Um, and, uh, you know, we had a good positive conversation going, so maybe we should keep that. But it just well, – It's just like it what, really, what Troy did. We talked about this today. You and I talked today about what Troy Steiner did and how quick he did it at Fresno State. And it shows you how fertile the recruiting ground is. I mean, granted, he did it with an NFL football player. <laughs> Really, a really good athlete, right? And uh, huck it. But <laughs> what he did has taken a lot of these Midwestern teams, you know, MAC teams, having an All American, some of them in 20 years. And this guy, he gets a guy, he gets an NFL fullback, gets him to Pittsburgh, and, you know, he makes a run, right? The guy takes fifth in yeah. the tournament. Josh Hokett, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Hokett does the job, and he's a local kid. He's a local yeah. guy. He's right down Clovis. the road. Yeah, right down the road. Yeah. It just – Well, but, he's yeah. he's one of the finest coaches I know and also one of the, you know, most upstanding uh, human beings. And so, you know, for me, obviously, I have a, you know, long-term, long-time relationship with him and really know the guy, and you know, so – Maybe it bothers me more than it does the next guy. Yeah. But, um, you know, I know what kind of person he is. And I know he worked his tail off to get that going down there. And, um, yeah, it just, it just stinks. And he built a club. He, he got a club. And 
whilst having guys in the club, a guy wins a, a, a world bronze medal. Yeah, I mean, he get Joe Cologne on, on the I world mean, team. He's, you know, and he's got all these other guys. He, Lavalley, he Lavalley was there. He didn't say finalist training with his guys. Reno uh, guy, Joey Lavalley, right? Lavalley and Jason Chamberlain. Cabell. Right, yeah. Cabell Blake, was I mean, out there. Yeah, no, nah, it's just, uh, you know, again, I, I don't have a lot of positive words for it. It uh, just it just stinks. But but hold on. So we got Long Island, Long Island. They they had a they almost got some qualifiers this week, right? Presbyterian competed at the Southern Conference, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. We got new programs. We got programs we got converting. We got Cal Baptist. Which listen, man. Here's another thing with the Pac-12. Now, why is Cal Baptist going in with the Big 12? Hey, man, I lived this, Zeb. I know, man. It's just super I lived this. I could have told you four years ago that the Pac-12 was not going to take Baptist because I sat on conference calls and listened. And you know what the biggest, you know what the biggest thing? Uh, they don't fit our culture. They're not uh, the one and anything else. I mean, I, I'm wrong. I, whatever. Just go yeah, ahead and tell they, me. <laughs> you know, and they're. Hell, and they're a Baptist school, you know, and they, they have, you know, their religion and we, we don't, that's not our conference, you know, yeah. that's, you know, their, their, uh, some of their beliefs aren't in line with what ours are. The Pac-12 mission, right? Right, the Pac-12 mission and, sure. you know, the academic standards and this and that. And, Which it wasn't you know, about I mean, the academic, like, when you say that immediately, obviously it's just about the religious thing. Well, I mean, you can even say the academics and stuff. You, you can say that, and that's fine. But you know, I mean, just don't get mad if you're, just don't get mad if you're Washington State or Oregon State or or somebody like that, and and Stanford turns their nose up at you and says, "Hey, man, you you, you shouldn't be part of our conference. You yeah. don't meet our academics." There you go. Right. Yeah. You know, Cal. Yeah. No, you're right, and then. Just really so, frustrating. So there's stuff. layers even within their conference of academic standards and excellence. Exactly. And it's just, you, you know, know, it's it's frustrating to to hear the things that the excuses are or or lack of leadership, I guess, is is um the ultimate thing, right? That just they lack leadership. Yeah, leadership. no, it it is. I mean, I got a good story. So when Fresno wanted to come in, you know, Fresno wanted to come in um initially, and Pac 12 told him no. And they said, you know, we, we, we got our six teams. That's our AQ, you know, that's it. And, you know, I, I was of the belief that we should always be trying to build our conference, their strength and numbers. You got, you got home and homes. You got, you know, you got um, rivalries. You got the chance for these teams to develop into something and, and, and earn your conference more qualifiers and more competition, you know, it raises everybody up. Yeah. Um, we need more. You know, when I started out there, there were 10 teams in the conference. And then I saw it go to nine, eight, seven, six, and damn near four, really, with ASU and, and Bakersfield being rescued from, from, the, from the depths of one leg in the coffin. Yeah. And so really, to see 40 to 60 percent of your, your conference contract or almost contract, and they're like, no, no, we're good. You know, we're good. And I said, but we need, we, we need more here, you know, and like, and because I thought someday. You know, what if? And the answer was, well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. You know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So about a year later, we lost Boise, unfortunately. And it was like, what bridge are you going to cross? Who's, who's out there? You going to go over to the Big Ten and ask one of them to come? Like, who are you going to invent a wrestling team to put in the conference? And so Fresno wanted to be in there. And they told him no, because they had Boise. Then they came back. Then they came back 11th hour and said, oh, hey, and, and they were already tied up with the Big 12, you know, and they said, hey, well, would you want to come now? And Fresno said, well, I'll tell you what, you know, our, uh, our women's, uh, I think it was lacrosse, I think it was lacrosse, didn't have a league. And so here they are, here's Pac-12, you know, the Conference of Champions, you know, you watch all their thing. And so all about opportunity and you see all these, all these all these uh, commercials, you know, I watch the Pac-12 channel and, you know, they do a lot of good things, but you see these commercials and it's just like, 
all the conference of champions and opportunity and you see all this and the champion of women's sports. Well, all Fresno wanted was to get their women's lacrosse in there and they would go in there for wrestling. And then they could have got Fresno rather than Little Rock. And, and, and they said, well, if we don't find a place for this women's team, we're, we're looking at having to like get rid of it, like cut it because they don't have a, and Pac-12 said, yeah, no. Nah. We'll yeah, take the record. About that. Not yeah. our deal. So conference of champions, not in my, you know, not in my book. Uh, what's best for us? You know, there's always a chance to do what's right. Yes. That's yeah. all the time. There's an MLK. Okay. There's, what, what a, there's that? always, what, yeah. what, always, what anytime, anytime is the time to do something right. It's an MLK quote. There, there you go. I want to get the exact quote because I read it. I walk down, it's posted in my school. You know, it says, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's, 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 it's such a way to live your life. How about that? Sure, it is, sure. there's, yeah, there's so such a wise word. Always time to do yeah. the right. Uh, it's you ready? You ready for this? I'm ready. The time is always right to do what is right. Okay, there you go. See, so hey, the time is Fresno. always right to do what is right. Yeah. Hey, women's lacrosse. Hey, yeah. yeah you got a home here. Right. I read that quote every day play. when I walk down the steps. It's posted in my my school. It's posted on like one of the. I forget if you're walking down. I forget. I see it every day, and I'm always like, "That's yeah." That is that is yes. Help people. Yeah, I mean, they could have, you know, like Fresno. The right like, thing. Hey, it's the right thing. Sure. Let Fresno stay in to the Pac-12. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like you know, it's but it's big. It's the oh, it's the branding. You know, it's the branding. Oh, and, it, and it's really like well, you're branding as far as you know what you do as far as football and basketball and branding toward that. I mean, yeah. Did they really think lacrosse? Like does, does some people were going to stop watching their big money sports. If they had Fresno state lacrosse. Oh, there? Fresno or, state's women's lacrosse is in the pack 12. We got to oh, abandon yeah. that. No, we're not uh, fans anymore. Yeah. I'm not going to, I got, I, I'm not redoing my, my season tickets it's down here. At, it's an absurd yeah. notion, right? It's an absurd yeah. notion. It's an elitist notion. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. hundred percent. But, uh, you know, that's you, know, you got to walk me off the ledge here a little bit. We got to wrap this up. I got yeah. I, I got to go in and talk to my. I could talk to you all night. You already know that. So yeah, let's talk about. Um, I'm gonna go to the NCAs. Oh yeah, I'm gonna take my my son and my daughter to the NCAs. Nice. And and my brother-in-law, Drew's Drew's coach, the the head coach Jeff of Coeur d'Alene High School. Jeff Moffat for folks. Who yeah. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to go with those guys to St. Louis. And so we, we can turn it back and talk about something cool and positive. And then, and then it's going to be into spring wrestling and camps and stuff, man. And, 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 you know, um, make it plans for you to come out and see us and hike a couple trails and get some footage of what's going on out there in the sticks in that uh, wrestling dungeon. Do you do what's what are you doing with the club are you still doing inland what are you doing well yeah i'm involved with inland but it's just it's not going right now unfortunately um because, because of COVID. We're, yeah but so yeah i went and started helping out last night um at quarter lane high's little guy club that actually uh buzzsaw that i helped um start about 22 years ago when my brother-in-law got the job there i started the kids club and and um ran a lot of the kids club practices when he first got the job at Coeur d'Alene High and I was like a young assistant at North Idaho College at the time and so we started this club and uh you know I went and did my thing all you know different places and now um I went to practice there last night and brought my son and my 10 year old and a couple of his buddies they're open for business yeah yeah, we're yeah. open for business over here at um, Bomber Wrestling Club. Ferdinand, the the Miller boys went last night. I got to send you a couple of videos. They uh, Ferdinand is doing a stance drill, and he's really enjoying it. And they asked to go tonight, but um, I I, I don't really want to push him, man. I'm not gonna lie to you. We're we're going two days a week, man. Our little yeah, 
No. I mean, these guys are three and five, man. Come on. Yeah, no. My 10-year-old's going twice a week, and he's, he's going to go to a tournament this weekend. And it's going to be his first tournament. Uh, well, it'll be a second tournament in a year. I took him to Utah for a little – for a dual thing. And, uh, and yeah, so that we got that going on, and we got the camp. I got 12 kids coming in from Oregon on Friday. I've got um, and and the rest Washington kids. So just getting going with that. Yeah, man, for sure. I, I can't wait to and get you out. You saw there. the pictures I sent you, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The dungeon. Yeah. The add-on with, with, with the add-on and everything. Yeah. And hey, so yeah. what do you think of Hayden Brawny's desktop? It's beautiful. Well, yeah, I I was wondering if you could make one of those for me. Hey, the, I'm kidding. He might, I'm kidding. He might hit you with an assassin, but okay. that was his move. He's an assassin guy. Yeah, Rylan Rogers tried to get me in the assassin a couple weeks ago. What are you? What are you doing out? I I told him, hey, hey, a bad shoulder, man. Hey, you know, no, you're stop it. Stop doing it. <laughs> stop doing it. I All did right. ride him in. I did ride him in a leg for fifteen or twenty seconds. That guy hurt you, man. You're going to need a hip replacement <laughs> before you know if you're messing with that guy. And you know what? Drew Roberts is going to hurt you pretty soon, too. So stop. Oh, no. He's, it's done. I'm done, man. I'm done. I'm not wrestling those guys anymore. No. So, That's why I'm I, in the spot I'm in, you know? Hey, thank you for everything. I got to get you some swag, man. I got the uh, – I got these Barbarian Hour Clears. It is that oh. logo. But a clear, and it's all the lettering is clear, and whatever you put it on brings it out. I should crack one open. Um, what do you do with it? Put it on whatever. Put it on whatever. Then we got the these oh, yeah. guys. We got to go high yeah. on these guys. I don't know why I'm trying to show it. I'm trying to show it to you over here, even though you're not there. Got these yeah, no, guys. no. There, yeah. There. <laughs> I, those are two of my favorite brands. Go high yeah. Gohio, you got me on to Gohio, so, you know, and Barbarian, and defense, man. Well, yeah, there'll be some defense out there, um, and you're, you've been hooking guys up with defense, haven't you? I have, man, I have. We've been, so, at all of the camps I had uh, this fall, I had four camps, so I had- You're hooking uh, athletes up, right? Yeah, I had 118 kids come through in the fall. Yeah. And everybody everybody got a defense package. Did they? Yes, they did. Speaking of which, as you hear me digging around. They got a defense package. Oh, uh, see, I don't have that one. Hey, my niece uses this. My nephews use it. This stuff is amazing. They jumped levels with this, man. He jumped levels with this new product line. You know, what those guys do, I was working with them this weekend um, at the Junior High State Duels. St. Ed's won it. Yeah, there that thing is. There's this, by the way. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. What they are doing and what other people do and the fact that we're having this conversation right here. I've been, I've been saying it since the beginning of time. It's a good thing there are smarter people out there than me. I mean, we'd still be trying to have horses pull us around on square wheels. <laughs> I mean, really. If it was just guys like me around, I mean, good golly. I mean, think about no. the Millers, the knuckle-dragging, mouth-breathing Millers, dude. Come oh, I, yeah. No, I know. Come on, I man. Um, but Guy and um, Gus, the Seikos, and then yeah. uh, obviously Charlie Algazino. I was talking to him about when hopefully we get you out to Ohio here in the next year and get you to do a clinic at the Defense Soap. Uh, world headquarters because he's got a two mat full I, I resolite filled wrestling room. Oh, I saw that room. Oh, it's I a saw sweet it. room. Sweet room. Yeah, I was. I was. I was a little bit. I tell you, I was a little bit. Um, I don't want to say jealous, but a, a little bit envious. Yeah, I saw that and was like, man alive, man! Oh, how great! Man this? alive! Oh, unreal. It, it's, it's, it's a beautiful room. All right. Yeah. So here we're going to, we're going to uh, brand the Yeti cup. You ready? We're going to brand yeah. the Yeti cup and we should be done. I should be done after I uh, brand the Yeti cup. 
which it's not going to show up while on the Yeti cup because the Yeti cup is silver. Let's give her a shot. That's the first one I've put on anything. Sticker meal, by the way. They do a heck of a job, man. Hey, how's the tribe doing in preseason? Have you been paying attention? I have not been paying attention. I saw that there is uh, warm baseball starting. Yeah, yeah, no. I just know because I get updates on my phone, for, like from last year. So, like, I, I, every time somebody hits a home run or does something for L.A. in the spring training, I get, mm -hmm. like, a notification. But we, we know that it doesn't, you know. Ah, uh, there we go. Clear? Yeah. Get this clear. It's going to be just like Bonds is clear. Yeah, the clear, the clear, the cream clear, and the clear. Rub it right? On, right, yeah, the clear. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Hey, 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 man. I I just thought I was getting a massage. Yeah, I mean, then, whatever, right? I just, it was lotion. My, oh, uh, there we go. My hands, my head, my feet. Jaw, my jaw, jaw forehead, head. I was getting the ball. Six, seven hundred feet. Yeah, I don't know I was, what was going on, right? I just thought I was seeing the ball really well, man. You know? <laughs> I but thought I was yeah. like Ted Williams and Manny Ramirez. I could, yeah. I could, uh, you know, or Muhammad Ali. I could, you could throw a ball at me and write a number on it at a hundred mile an hour, and I could tell you what the number was. Yeah. Oh yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. You he know? got like, uh, or actually, maybe he thought he climbed into uh, the thing with Peter Parker when the radioactive spider bit him. <laughs> yeah. Madness, yeah. K Rob. All right. Hey, yeah, you know, because when you're 35 or whatever it is, like you're 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 you always grow. Your oh yeah, you're still on the head. you're still on the like rocket. Oh, yeah. Your yeah. trajectory is still. It's not like <laughs> and then you that's so because that's how yeah. most humans. Do. His was just right. His physical <laughs> physical dominance to Barry Bonds. I didn't know. He I didn't know. know. He didn't know. It was the clear. It was to clear. All right. Over and out. Barbarian hour. K Rob, you're my guy. Stick around. Let's talk. Thank you for the time, Kevin Roberts. You're my guy.